Code Explained says hi. Today we want to talk about how to use the break statement inside the for each method. So let's first see what's going to happen when you use the break statement inside the for each method. So I have here an array of numbers and I'm going to go through my array using a simple for loop. So I'm going to go and start with index equals zero. This is the element with the index zero and I'm going to stop at the last one here. Then I want to increment i by 1 to go to uh, the next element each time. Now all I will do here is just console log the number. So I'm going to console log the number uh, string here and then the number itself using the numbers with index i. Now when I run this in my console log I'm going to get 1 on the first iteration when i equals 0. Then when i equals 1 I'm going to get the number 2. Now let's say for some reason I don't want to go to the next element 3 and 4. So in that case I'm going to use an if statement and check when i equals 1 and when this is true so I just after console log in this number 2 here I'm going to use the break statement to break out of the loop and this will work as expected with a full loop here. Now if I use a for each I want to pass in a function and then that function takes in as parameters the number or the element, the current element itself and then the next one or the second one is the index. And now I'm going to go and do the same thing with the here. So I'm going to console log the number. So that's the number here. I don't need to use numbers with index i anymore. And then I'm going to use an if statement to check when i equals 1 then break. Now when I run this code here I'm going to get a syntax error that says illegal break statement. So it's illegal to use a break statement inside a function. So you can only use a break statement inside a full loop or the switch statement. So you can either use this inside a for loop, a simple for loop or a for of loop or a while loop or the switch statement. Now let's go and see how we can work around this issue so how we can use the break statement inside a for each. So to do that I'm going to use some other methods that are the same as the for each. So every sum and find and find index. So these methods here are used to achieve a certain goal when you're coding but at the same time these four methods here will all go through your array elements one by one. So this means that these four methods here are exactly the same as the for each but with the ability of breaking out from the loop. So let's go and talk about the every. So every here is used whenever we want to check if an array or if all, I said all the elements in an array satisfies a condition. So if all the elements satisfies a condition every will return true. If just one element in the array doesn't satisfy the condition every will return false. So let's say I want to check if all the numbers here are positive. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call every on my numbers array and then pass in a callback function. The first element here is the element itself. I'm going to call it number and then I'm going to return a condition. If all the numbers here satisfies this condition here, every will return true. If just one of them doesn't satisfy this condition here, every will return false. So I'm going to check if all the numbers here are greater than zero. And of course you can see here that one of the numbers is negative, so every will return false. We don't care about the returned value from every here. So what's going to happen here on the first uh, element here, one, 1 is greater than 0 so the condition here evaluates to true. So then if we will go to the next one and check 2, 2 again is greater than 0 so the condition evaluates again to true. And then on the third element here minus 3, minus 3 is not greater than 0 so this evaluates to false. Now what's going to happen here is that every doesn't need to go to the next element. So when an element returns false every will just break out of the loop and return false because simply when one element 
doesn't satisfy the condition, that means all the elements in your array doesn't satisfy that condition. So from these results here, you can see that for every to go to the next element, we just need to return true. And whenever we need to break out of the loop, we need to just go and return false. So to achieve the same result we achieved with a simple full loop here, I'm going now to call every with a callback function, and then I'm going to pass in two parameters, number and i, because I need the index here. So I'm going to console log the number, and then I'm going to return true. Why do I need to return true? Because every needs to get true returned to go to the next one. So if I don't return nothing here, my function here will return undefined, and undefined is false, and that's going to make every break out of the loop on the first element. So I need to return true to go to the next one. And now all I need to do here is I'm going to check if i is equal to 1 just like here and then inside the break I'm going to use return false because because returning false will make every break out of the loop. Now when I run this code here on the index 0 the number is going to be 1. This condition is not satisfied. The function will return true. This means for every to go to the next one. Then the index now is 1. We're going to log the number 2 to the console. And now this condition here is satisfied. We're going to return false. And false for every means break. So every will break out of the loop. And that's how you can break out of the every method. Now with sum, it's going to be the opposite. So sum here is used whenever you want to check if at least one of the elements in your array satisfies a condition. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pass in a, a callback function. The first parameter again is the number of the element. Then I'm going to return number is less than zero. So what I'm doing here is I'm checking if at least one number is less than zero. And that number here you can see is minus three. Now on the first iteration, index zero, so the number is going to be one. One is less than zero, that's going to be false. So here, sum will go to the next one and check if that next one satisfies the condition or not. So you can see it is the opposite of every. So every needs true to be returned to go to the next one, but for sum, it needs to get false return to go to the next one. Now on the second iteration, two for the number two, two is also not less than zero, so this is false. This means it's still gonna go to the next one here, and then minus three is less than zero, so this evaluates to true. And now that this condition here is satisfied, sum will break and return true, because one or at least one of the elements in our array satisfies the condition here. So now all I need to do here to achieve such result, I'm going to use sum. I'm going to pass in a callback function, number, the number itself, and then the index. So I'm going to console again the number here, and then I'm going to use an if statement and then return true because if you remember, we need to return true so sum can stop iterating our array. Now on the first iteration, i is zero, the number is going to be one. This condition here is not satisfied. We didn't return nothing from our function, so undefined we returned by the function, and undefined is false. And false means to go to the next one. Then the next one's index is going to be 1, the number is going to be 2, and the condition here evaluates to true, so we're going to return true, which means sum will stop here. And that's how you can use break inside the sum method. Now for find and find index, it's going to be the same thing. So I'm just going to go and redo the whole thing. Except that there is a difference of the return value, but we don't care about the return value here. We care about breaking out of the loop. So every returns false or true, sum returns false or true, find will return the element you want to find, and find index returns the index of the element you want to find its index. So let's go and talk about find. So I'm going to need to find the number that is less than zero, which is minus three. So what's going to happen here on one, it's going to return false. So it's going to go to the next one. You can see just like sum. So two here is not less than zero. So false, it's going to go to the next one. Then minus three satisfies the condition. Then it's going to return true. And then what's going to happen with find, it's going to break out of the loop. 
Find here we return the number, but we don't care about what it's returning. Now to achieve such results, we're going to do the same thing we did with sum. We're going to just go and console log the number and then check if i is 1, then we return true. We don't return nothing here because our function without a return statement will return uh, false and false for find means to go to the next element. So if we take a look on the console, we're going to get the same results. Again, the same thing with find index. Find index is used to get the index of the element that's going to satisfy the condition returned by this function here. So I'm going to uh, find the number that is less than zero or the first occurrence of the number that is less than zero's index. So again, uh, in the first iteration, one is less than zero, that's false. We're going to go to the next element just like we did with find and sum. Again, two is not less than zero, false. We're going to go to the next one, minus three is less than zero, that's true. So we're going to break out of the loop. So find index doesn't need to go to the next element anymore. Now to achieve such results, we're going to use the same uh, function we used with find and sum. So we're going to console log the number and then we need to check if i is one and then return true to break out of the loop. So then if we run this code and take a look on the console, we're going to get the same results. So uh, in general, to break out of every one to return false, if you want to break out from some find and find index, you want to return true. And that's how you can break out of a for each method. Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe and see you in the next tutorial.